Hi everyone and uh, welcome to this live stream. Uh, today we are at the Hi-Fi Club headquarters uh, in Aarhus, in Denmark. Um, my name is Pau, I work at Hi-Fi Club, obviously. And uh, the reason why we make uh, these streams is that we would celebrate uh, what we call Hi-Fi Days. Um, actually, we dedicated a couple of weeks um, to celebrate Hi-Fi, to celebrate great music. And uh, of course, we would like you all to play that music on great stereo. Um, so it's a celebration of, of what we believe in, in well-produced music and playing it on a very good stereo system. Um, for this stream, I'm so fortunate to have a visitor uh, called Roland Hoffman. Um, he's the director of product marketing at Lyngdorf Audio. Um, and he's here to tell us about uh, Room Perfect. But Roland, a very warm welcome to you. Hello. And uh, could you start telling us just what is it you do at Lyngdorf? Yeah, I'm a director of product marketing. And that contains basically two parts. One is product. So I'm yeah. part of the product team. Uh, creating new products uh, for the future, but also taking care of our current products. And the other part is uh, in the market, so spending time with, well, with you, uh, yeah. with our partners, with our retailers, with customers, and also on hi-fi shows and events, basically in Europe and a little bit across the globe. Yeah, okay, so not so many events right now? No, you but that gives know. you more time to listen at home for music. Yeah, music okay. That's fine. <laughs> that sounds good. <laughs> so. We will. We look very much forward to hear your presentation, but um, you should look very much forward to that. And uh, during the presentation, you're very much welcome to uh, send in questions. We have people ready uh, to answer those, and uh, we'll use some of the questions at the end to, to Roland, and he'll answer at his best. So, Roland, we look very much forward. Take it away. Okay. Thanks, okay, Paul. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, I'm very happy to talk about Room Perfect today. And as you can guess by the name, it's all about room acoustics. Um, and uh, most of you are familiar with that because you have probably come into a room uh, or selected two nice speakers uh, and bring them home and suddenly it sounds very different than what you heard before. And that can even be in a surround system or a stereo system. And that's all about what loudspeakers do in your room or rather what the room does to your speakers. Um, so that is all about room acoustics. And as it said uh, in the introduction that Lingdorf Audio has a secret um, about addressing room acoustics. And I would also already like to share one secret, like just in the beginning. Um, this doesn't work, uh, mainly because it's made for X and not for acoustics. So that's one secret already. And the other secret is that most people are not really happy with what room corrections do. And today I would also like to give a little bit more background about what are differences in, in room acoustics or in uh, room electronics, uh, room corrections, and room perfect. So um, in principle, it sounds very easy because you have all seen the uh, the rule book uh, of how to uh, set up two speakers at home. And I brought you uh, one graphics, a very simple one, um, which is this one. Maybe you're familiar with it. So this is the called stereo triangle. And if you look at this, you might think, what can go wrong? I mean, there's a room, two speakers, and you sit somewhere in this triangle, um, and still it doesn't sound like so right. So maybe you have too much bass or you have a lack of bass and the imaging in the staging is not right, it's very blurred and you have reflections and so something seems to not work out. And since uh, Pao mentioned this Haifa week is all about, you know, experience enjoying music at home, something's not really uh, making this enjoyable. And I give you uh, an idea what is wrong because there's something wrong with this picture. And do you know what? I give you a clue. If you look at this uh, nice stereo triangle again, does your room look like this white box? There's no furniture, no windows, no nothing. Or does your room rather look like, well, like this? And I think it looks, or I hope it looks more like this, because that's reality. And then you have a sofa and chairs and windows and furniture, and that all have an influence and impact on the sound. And even if we move one step further for a surround system, so I have another graphics uh, for, for the surround, which is this one. 
Again, it seems very straightforward, right? So you see a 5.1 system in this case, uh, and uh, so what can go wrong? Uh, many things can go wrong, because again, you don't live in this white box. You live in a room which looks like a normal living room, and then all these uh, problems come in. So what Lingdorf Audio has done uh, many, many years ago, together with a large group of engineers, uh, led by our founder, Peter Lingdorf, is to really investigate and research what is going on with room acoustics. Why is it not possible that every loudspeaker sounds good in any home, be it two-channel or surround? Why is it not possible? Um, and that took a long time, uh, and the outcome was uh, something we call Room Perfect, which is available in our amplifiers, stereo amplifiers, as well in the uh, AV processors. And that does things very, very different than many other room acoustics. To understand a little bit uh, what Room Perfect is doing, we have to look into room acoustics first. Um, so I try to simplify a little bit here. So when I say it seems very straightforward and simple, uh, I have another graphic I'd like to show you. And this is more like the uh, typical image or icon of a loudspeaker. And that's what everyone understands, and that was many people think what's going on in a loudspeaker, is that a loudspeaker just radiates sound forward. So if you have a, a nice speaker here, you have woofers, you have tweeters, maybe a mid-range, and just fire sound into the room. Well, actually that's not true. Actually what's really happening is, and I show you another graphic and uh, visualization of frequencies, uh, which looks like this. So what you see here suddenly looks a little bit more difficult uh, at the first uh, sight. So what you see is a, a dark blue oval in front of the speaker. This is where the sp speaker is quite directional, firing sound. But you see a lot of light blue and medium blue areas. And this is actually lower frequencies. And you can see the low frequencies, they just spread around the speaker. They really fill the room with energy. And that's where the problems start. Uh, so that is really how, how sound looks like. And in reality, it is so difficult because we cannot see sound. We just sit there, we listen to music, and we have no clue what's going on or why it goes wrong. Uh, because it's not like in this nice blue image where you can see sound and see where the sound is going. And then we even talk not only about a loudspeaker and how it radiates sound, but we talk about loudspeakers in a room. Okay, so let's have another look in another graphics. Maybe the wording has, uh, is a little bit familiar to you because it comes up when everyone talks about, when someone talks about room acoustics. It's so-called room modes, room notes or standing waves. And that is in the low frequencies again. If you have low frequencies, you can really imagine bass like water waves. Um, and the problem is that we all, well, not the problem, but we all live in a closed room. We have walls and we have a ceiling and we have a floor. So this low frequency energy, the bass is kind of trapped in the room. And what happens in every room, no matter if it's a small room or a big room or L-shaped room, it builds up standing waves. And what that means is you have some areas in the room where you have way too much bass and other areas where there's a lack of bass because some waves collide and uh, cancel out each other. So some areas, if you move around the room, there will be some areas where there's actually no bass. And then there are other areas in the room where both happen at the same time. So some frequencies are way too much and some frequencies are very, very low in level. And now just imagine that is a point where you just choose to sit. And then you wonder, why doesn't it sound right? Well, because you cannot see sound, but that's just what happens in every, every room. And it goes on. We have another thing and that you see in the next graphic, and that's called the speaker boundary response. I think most of you have seen something called the frequency response, let's say in a hi-fi magazine, which looks a little bit more like a nice line, okay? What you see here in this graphics is obviously a line with two very strong dips, and that is just a lack of energy, in this case, a lack of bass. And this is actually coming from a loudspeaker placed in a room, and the first dip you see where the frequency goes down is the back wall. There's some sound energy going to the back wall, and it bounces back. And then all these waves interact with each other, cancel out each other, and there's actually a lack of bass. That's what you can see in this first dip in the graphic. 
So then you can say, okay, then I move the speaker a little bit away from the wall. That's fine. You can even it out a little bit. It never goes away, I have to say, unless you have a huge room. Um, but you can do something about it a little bit. But if you uh, see, look at these graphics again, there's another dip. And that's roughly below 200 hertz in this case. Um, and that is another wall uh, and another cancelling out effect. And that is a wall you unfortunately cannot remove. It's this one. It's the floor. Okay, so there, is, there are some effects in the low frequencies coming from the floor. It's sound waves hitting the floor, coming back and interacting with the original wave. So these are all things going on without you seeing it, but it just happens in every room. And this one, again, as I said, you cannot really move or raise the speaker higher or remove the floor. That's just how it is. And then we move on to another graphics I'll bring you, which is uh, about the mid and high frequencies. Now, what you see here is admittedly not a, a living room. It's actually a small theater, but it's a great image or graphic because it visualizes reflections. So without knowing much about uh, acoustics or being a sound engineer, you can see by this image, that doesn't look good. There's a lot going on. And that is all reflections coming from windows, from hard surfaces from walls. If you don't have a carpet, it also comes from the floor. It definitely comes from the ceiling. So there's a lot going on. And these mid and high frequency reflections usually do one thing. They blur the imaging, the staging, you know, where some magazines uh, or reviewers talk about the nice imaging, the voice is perfectly in the middle and the guitar is right behind it and so on. All these things are called imaging and staging and they usually blur completely the more you have reflections in the room. It's not only at your home, as you can see by that graphics, uh, it's also in every theater we have to take care of these uh, reflections. So in reality, it looks a little bit like this. This is actually uh, something from our research and development phase uh, when we're doing Room Perfect. So the actual frequency response you would measure in a room looks very messy. So again, without having studied room acoustics uh, or sound engineering, you can see by this graph, uh, it doesn't look good. But that's reality and that really how sound would look like in a very, very normal room. So um, the engineers um, together with our founder, Peter Lindroff, they found some uh, ideas what we can do and some uh, technology, uh, how we can improve things in the digital domain, electronically, because there are two ways what you can do now about this. One thing is to get something like absorbers, diffusers, or bass traps, which sounds very logical. So these are things that you plaster the wall with um, to uh, basically kill the room acoustics. So that's the main idea of it, uh, just having no sound from the walls and from the ceiling and from the floor. So that's one idea, to treat the room. Um, usually two things happen if you do that. So one is that it ends up, or the room starts to sound a little bit weird and very unnatural uh, because it doesn't sound like a normal room anymore. It sounds like a damped and heavily treated room. So it sounds a little bit weird, that's one thing. And the other thing is probably your partner might leave you uh, because it doesn't look good, let's face it. Okay, no bass trap in the corner, let alone four of them or something, or diffusers and absorbers look very nice in a normal living room. And that's what we talk about here. Um, it works very well, and that's what these things are made for in a studio, in a recording studio or sound mixing uh, booth the acoustics has to be completely dead because there are people working with sound eight, nine hours a day. You know, they have to listen for every detail. That's not what you do to, to, at home. You just sit there and want to enjoy music. Uh, of course, you want to hear the details, but you're not analyzing sound. You want to enjoy sound and music. Um, so all these acoustic treatments, is uh, they, they might help a little bit, but they, they don't really... Um, or let's say they have a lot of side effects. And talking about side effects, the other thing you can do is electronic room correction. And as I said in the beginning, many people are not very happy with electronic room correction. You often or we often hear something like, there is no musicality anymore, uh, or the bass is gone, so 
the problem is gone, but also the base disappeared, or the imaging and staging is very flat and there is no dynamics anymore. So, and that was the starting point of, of Room Perfect. We thought, okay, we know that there is a lot of problems in the room. We know what doesn't work. So can we find something, can we develop something in our amplifiers that actually improve room acoustics by making it right and keeping the musicality and the sound uh, of the great loudspeakers? And the outcome is, is room perfect. Um, so one way how it starts is um, that we have included in our amplifiers and multi-channel process a very high quality microphone. So this is already at the very start of Room Perfect. If you ever had some other room corrections or speaker calibrations, you sometimes find a very low quality, low cost microphone in it. But when you have a Lingdorf amplifier or MP product, you actually get a very, very high quality microphone with it to gather better data. So that's the starting point. So at the first, it's very easy with Room Perfect. You place this microphone exactly where you sit and point it towards the speakers. So a bit like that. And as you also can see in the graphics here, um, pretty straightforward. Now this is the starting point of Room Perfect. And this is actually also where most room corrections end. They just measure there, have a signal sweep, like a measurement tone, a very short one, and that's it. But with Room Perfect, this is actually only the starting point because now comes a very, very important part. In the second step, you move the microphone around in your room. So you choose another position somewhere in the room by random, just put it somewhere in the room, and then you, have, you measure again. And you do this several times, as you can see in the graphics uh, now. You do it several times and you put the microphone somewhere else in the room every time. By doing that, Room Perfect actually understands the room acoustic problems. Um, and it differentiates that from the actual sound from the loudspeaker. If you only have one spot and measure only at where you sit, the microphone puts it all together. So every reflection from the window, from the floor, all these room modes and room notes we talked about, everything is just in this one measurement. But Room Perfect goes, goes one step further. It really maps the room. I have another graphic for you. Um, this actually shows how sound, especially in the low frequency, behaves in a room. And you see it's surprisingly symmetrical. So what you see here is the dark areas are areas where there's too much bass, as we talked before, and the white areas you can imagine as areas where there's actually a lack of energy or not enough bass. Okay? But as you can see it's quite symmetrical. So, and what we do now with mapping this room in the second graphic, you can see that, that we actually map the room. And with every microphone position, Room Perfect understands better what's really going on in the room. So you can already see by Room Perfect, uh, two things are very different. One is the microphone is very high quality. Second, we not only measure at the speaker, uh, sorry, at the uh, sitting position, but also we really map the room and understand uh, the room acoustical issues. And even the signal, how you measure or with what Room Perfect measures, is different. If you've ever tried some room corrections before, maybe you heard this so-called sweep, which just takes a few seconds. It's just like whoop, and that's it. What we do is we have two tones and they are quite long. So one over 10 seconds sound is only the low frequencies. And then another one over 10 seconds is only the high frequencies. It's very long because we really want to fill the room with energy, with sound, because that's what happening, what's happening when you listen to music. If you hear drums or if you hear, uh, listen to a, or see a movie, uh, there's a lot of energy in the room. There's no sweep in that. But we really feel, fill the room with energy and that's what Room Perfect gathers through the microphone. Um, so the microphone is different, mapping the room is different, the frequency is different or the test tone is very different and the outcome is something that is just better. It just keeps the sound character and quality of the loudspeaker. Now we have a lot of data 
And the question is, what does Room Perfect do with the data? Is there something different, or is that again the same like every room correction does it? No. Also, in the end, it is different. Um, what many room corrections strive for is something like a completely flat line, the so called uh, linear frequency response. And that is usually another thing where room corrections or many room corrections fall a little bit short because this is actually not representing your loudspeaker and that's also not how good rooms sound like. So if you ever hear a really impressive loudspeaker, I can almost promise you that the frequency response will not be absolutely linear. It will have some kind of sound character. And also if you've ever been into a room or cinema where I say, whoa, this sounds fantastic. I can promise you, if you would measure it, it would not look very, very linear. There will be something in it. And that is what we address in Room Perfect. So we gather better data, but also we don't just linearize it to death, but we use do it very, very uh, usefully. So the outcome can be a little bit like this graph, or it can be a little bit like this graph. Uh, it can be anything. So why is it always different? Why is the target what Room Perfect aims for is different? Well, simply because loudspeakers are different. Every loudspeaker is different. You decided to buy this pair of speakers because you like them. And it doesn't make sense to linearize them and to make all speakers sound alike. That doesn't work. Well, it works. It maybe kills the problem, but it also has a lot of side effects. And suddenly you have this lack of musicality or maybe not enough bass anymore. And the dynamics and the imaging and staging is very flat. So we really take care of the sound character of your speaker. And that goes for two-channel speakers or 2.1 or surround speakers. Uh, that is really a big, a very, very big difference. And before you think, home, oh, that's quite complicated, so I have to do this microphone, the measurements, and there's this tone and so on. Don't worry, you only have to do it once, of course. So when you have this amplifier or uh, surround processor at home, you do this once and then you pack the microphone and store it away forever. You don't need it. And you can still select uh, between the room perfect listening through Room Perfect optimization, or you can bypass it. Uh, so that's very nice in the beginning to switch back and forth. Uh, and the good thing is that people stick to the Room Perfect, rather with many room corrections, they stick to uncorrected, <laughs> simply because it often removes one room acoustic problems, but you pay for it with a lot of side effects. Okay, so uh, one nice thing is also when I say uh, it's very advanced and very um, technically uh, thought through. Uh, actually, it's very simple for you because you don't need to open your computer. You don't have to invite an acoustic engineer. You don't have to do much apart from taking your smartphone or your tablet um, and that it guides you to Room Perfect and it doesn't take uh, long and it's very, very easy to do. So that one of the great things is that you really don't need uh, to uh, book a university course to do room acoustic expertise in your home. Room Perfect will guide you with a smartphone, with the app. Uh, so that's, that's very easy to do. So that was in short uh, Room Perfect and I can only invite you to, to visit your next Hi-Fi Club and to experience that yourself because the effect before and after is just great. Um, but uh, I guess then Paul can also uh, have a few words on that. And hopefully we can visit you again at one point I hope so, so we can hear much. this, what I, what I promised now. <laughs> yes, and thank you very much, Roland. Welcome. That was a great presentation. Um, and while you did the presentation, actually a few questions came in. Good. Um, so I hope you're up for that. Yes. Um, first off, actually that's not a question. <laughs> and that's a bit because um, we had a customer that was a bit, bit disappointed yeah. um, because he, like me and maybe like you, likes to, to work with his system. Mm -hmm. And uh, when he set up his room perfect, he said, what, five minutes, that's it? Mm -hmm. He had to reset it all and do it again just to be sure. <laughs> and that was it. So actually, it's a positive thing. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's, yeah. oh, it's actually not a question. Just yeah. that is no, that's good. how and, easy it is. Yeah. And, and that, that proves how easy it is, but it also proves that usually you are really happy with the result afterwards. Yeah. 
Uh, there are some room corrections where the work kind of starts afterwards. You, you do that correction thing, and then you sit there like, mm, yeah, no. And then you start spending more time on it, but no. Yeah, okay, okay. So, yeah, but that was a happy customer, <laughs> thank you. Uh, some of the other questions, you've been somewhat around it, but uh, it's a customer asking, uh, I know you're telling me room perfect is perfect, but however, I've had some bad experience with room correction in my AVR. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, so yeah, he, he asks, what's your secret source, it says. But <laughs> <laughs> it's a good point because with, with AV receivers, um, they started way earlier yeah. with measuring in the room. Uh, so that was already in the early 90s, uh, probably even before that. Um, but there's one difference in it because all these AV receivers, the, the whole measuring, measuring the speakers actually comes from the, from the view of speaker calibration. Because in the old days you had tall front speakers and a tiny center speaker and two even smaller in the rear. And the AV receiver has to kind of level it all by, by volume level to make it all align yeah. and measure the different distance. So the approach of all these measurements were speaker calibration. And speaker calibration is something different than addressing room acoustics okay. and room acoustical problems. And still, until today, there are a lot of AV receivers who do these speaker calibration very well, but forget a little bit about room acoustic problems. And that's something different. Yeah, um, so it's not so much a secret source, but it's really to, to think things through yeah. one step further and taking the room into account. Yeah, and so not address just another the speakers. Problem as well, yeah. Address another yeah. problem and really address, not only see the speakers, if you remember this white square, this white box, yeah, yeah, uh, white yeah. room, Three that was speaker calibration. Yeah, that's what speaker calibration can do. But addressing room acoustics is one step further. Okay. Thank you. And uh, just one more. Um, other room EQ systems, it's kind of the same. It's like Odyssey. Uh, that's the ones most mm -hmm. use, I think. Yeah. Uh, but it's what you say. It's it's all the same. Or Room Perfect does it like you say in another way. It's actually yeah. So I have to say, let's be clear. A lot of room corrections, they address the room acoustical issue. Yeah. Um, that's what most are doing um, because they also developed further. Um, but you always kind of pay with it with some side effects, as I said. So uh, it addresses the core problem, but it takes, forgets to take into account some other things. And that's what we put into Room Perfect. We actually, actually the starting point of Room Perfect was a calibration like that um, that, that linearizes things a lot, um, but then we started to think a little bit further, why is the result not making everyone happy? So that was our starting point. Yeah. But I'm not saying that other room corrections don't address the acoustical problem. They do, no. yes. but you pay for it in some other areas. Yes, okay. So, so, so um, thank you very much. You're um, welcome. Actually, I learned something, uh, <laughs> and I work with it every day. Um, and. Uh, to you out there, I hope you enjoyed this uh, session. And uh, if you uh, like what you heard and got more interested, you're so very much welcome into our shops. We love, we would love to show you these products and even show you Room Perfect. We just told you how easy it is, and it really is. We can show you in five minutes in the shops. Um, so, Roland, thank you very much. Uh, I enjoyed having you here. Thanks for having me here. Yes, yeah. and thanks welcome. for watching. You're welcome. So, and for you out there, uh, thank you very much for watching uh, this stream. Remember, there's a lot more streams on Facebook and YouTube. Um, you should go watch them all, if you ask me. Um, but thank you very much for watching, and uh, we'll see you out there.